Illegal and dangerous consumable products are being sold all across Guyana. This problem has been going on for quite some time. However, recently, it's been on the rise. We sometimes see news of the government analyst food and drug department seizing products like cosmetics or food or issuing warnings about counterfeit or improperly sold pharmaceuticals. Despite their reported efforts, this problem continues to grow. Where, you might ask? I'm the Unspecialist. Let's talk about the unlawful sale of food and drugs by Chinese enterprises and the government bodies responsible for this oversight. A quick walk into many Chinese supermarkets and stores will show you that they don't necessarily abide by the law. One of the most common breaches of the law is their stores stocking and selling products that lack the necessary information in English. The packaging and labeling is often completely in Chinese. The Chinese ambassador said, and I quote, It was a proven fact that Chinese businesses in Guyana are adhering to the principles of mutual benefit and abiding by the laws while respecting local customs and contributing to local welfare. As promised, we'll be critically analyzing the Chinese ambassador's statements. We've already proven that Chinese stores are breaking the law by selling food and other products that aren't labeled in English. This cannot happen without the oversight and or failure of one or more government bodies. The first one that comes to mind is the Government Analyst Food and Drug Department, GAFDD. One medical mistake can permanently change your life or the life of someone you love. These mistakes are too common in America, causing injury and sometimes death. If you suspect that you were injured as a result of a medical mistake, call Washington Law Firm today. Don't lose your opportunity to get compensated. Don't wait. Book your free consultation with Washington Law Firm by calling 718-877-3100. Or find us at 455 Utica Avenue, Brooklyn, New York. If you'd like to advertise with us, be sure to make contact via our Facebook page. You can also inquire about hiring me to host your events, record voiceovers, or radio ads. The beautiful voice that you heard in the ad on this video is also available to you along with many others. Here's the abbreviated version of everything you need to know about GAFDD. The Government Analyst Food and Drug Department falls under the purview of the Ministry of Public Health. This department was initially established in the late 19th century to aid in performing analyses for the sugar industry. Later, its role was expanded with the enactment of Food and Drug Act of 1971. The Food and Drug Regulation 1977 to address safety and trade-related issues for food, drugs, cosmetics, and medical devices. To this end, the department is mandated in ensuring that items to which the Act and regulations applies are safe and pass quality checks to enter regional and international markets. Conformity assessment activities or procedures undertaken by the department includes, but are not limited to, inspections of facilities, items, records, and documents, approval for labels and import licenses, sampling and analysis, certification, for example, health, free sales certificate or marketing authorization, food handlers, ID cards, etc. Licensing for manufacturing or imports. Activities or procedures conducted by the department impact regional and international trade significantly. Food, drugs, cosmetics, or medical devices can only be imported or exported if the necessary inspection, sampling, analysis, and the issuance of results from analysis, health, free sale certificate, examination, a license to manufacture, or a permit to import is approved or issued by the department. In their vision, they say that the department also aims to facilitate local and international trade, protect consumers from substandard items through analytical testing and inspection and enforcement activities. In their mission, the Government Analyst Food and Drug Department, Ministry of Public Health, aims to protect the health and well-being of consumers and to enhance the competitiveness of industries regulated under the Food and Drug Act 1971 through ensuring the safety and quality of food, beverages, cosmetics, medical devices, drugs, and water through the establishment of safety and quality assurance systems. Regardless, as shown previously, in 2024, you can go to Chinese supermarkets and stores all across the country and find numerous products on the shelves that violate the food and drug regulations. 
Here are some more examples of products that clearly do not meet the standards set out by the GAFDD. These products had to be imported. Were they imported without inspection and approval of the labels? The GAFDD had to be involved somewhere in that process. But based on what we can see, it appears that they were not. But wait, there's more. The GAFDD falls under the Ministry of Health. So if there's oversight there, there's almost guaranteed to be gaps elsewhere. And walking around on the East Bank, it didn't take long before I found some more. In the $1,000 store on the East Bank, on the shelves, quite openly, you can see them selling amoxicillin, which is a penicillin-type antibiotic used to treat a variety of bacterial infections. You can also find amoxicillin in the Chinese supermarkets in Tushin. And alongside the amoxicillin, you'll also find ampicillin, another penicillin-type antibiotic. On the same shelves, in the same aisles on those supermarkets, you'll also find other medications which belong to the prescription-only medication list. However, in these Chinese supermarkets, they're being sold like regular groceries. First and foremost, those are prescription-only medications. They should not be just on the shelves like that, like mere grocery items easily accessed without a prescription. According to Section 14 of the Antibiotic Act, subject to Section 6, no antibiotic shall be issued to any person except on the prescription of a medical practitioner, dentist, or veterinary surgeon. This goes beyond just a violation of the regulations. In fact, you can consider this the building blocks of a foundation for a public health crisis. Easily accessed antibiotics can lead to antibiotic resistance in the population. And antibiotic resistance is a problem that we're seeing all across the world. And given those circumstances, that's the last thing a country like Guyana needs. But beyond that, can we confirm that those antibiotics are indeed genuine? On both counts, the Ministry of Health and its departments are responsible. The GAFDD has to perform its duties and the pharmacy board as well. How can these Chinese stores sell these medications without the necessary licenses and registration? Once again, here is another example of unfair competition enabled by administrative inaction or possibly even worse, administrative incompetence. Think about the local businesses, the small pharmacies and pharmacists who have to do continuing education sessions and get 12 credits before they can renew their pharmacy license. These are things that they have to pay money for. These are things that they have to take time out and work so that they can fulfill their duties and responsibilities to you, the consumer. After going into that expense of not only money, but also time and effort, here comes someone who is flouting all the regulations and doing their work for free. And not only that, in the process of undercutting the system, they're putting your health at risk. These Chinese supermarkets are more concentrated in low-income areas. Interestingly, counterfeit and improperly sold pharmaceuticals typically target low-income consumers who have less spending power and are more likely to pick up the improperly sold drugs just because they're cheaper. This is how these Chinese supermarkets and shops undercut licensed local businesses who serve the same communities. If the GAFDD is serious about their mission, they will perform their duty to protect these vulnerable consumers. This series isn't about being pedantic, frivolous, or xenophobic. It's about identifying real issues that affect Guyanese businesses and consumers. Any business that commits any of the violations listed in this video should be reported and punished accordingly. However, when it comes to these Chinese-owned businesses, the commission of these violations gives them an unfair advantage by exploiting and endangering Guyanese consumers. Now, of course, we'll have the people that'll say, oh, they're giving the poor man a chance by selling things cheaper. But hey, if your safety is only worth a few dollars, that's your prerogative. Regardless, what we see here is the government analyst, food and drug department, the pharmacy board, and by extension, the Ministry of Health 
failing to perform its duties to protect Guyanese citizens and consumers. And if this is allowed to continue, this very problem can grow to an extent where it becomes out of hand and does indeed become the public health crisis that I alluded to earlier. However, as mentioned in previous videos, much power still rests with you, the consumer. You have the power not to support. You also have the power to report enterprises that engage in practices like these. You also have the power to demand better from your authorities and representatives. And one of the easiest steps to getting that done is simply getting the message out there. You can do that by liking this video, leaving an insightful comment, and sharing it with someone who you think needs to hear this information. You can also support the series by sharing your stories, sharing photos, videos, or any examples of problems or violations that you might see in your community or places that you may visit or frequent. What do you think about this particular situation? Why do you think these businesses have been able to get away with selling illegal products for so long? Do you think the authorities are doing enough to manage this problem? Have they even acknowledged that it's a problem publicly? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. As always, thanks for your support and thanks for watching.